Okay, okay, friends, welcome once again to Look and Live. We're here with Pastor James Devalon, and this is another reaction video. Okay, friends, um, on my screen today is Charlie, Charlie Chion. All right, this kid, this Asian young man, has earned my respect. Uh, he did a video where he was addressing racism in against white people. It, the title of the video is what are we doing to white people? Listen, man, that video is getting a lot of views. Rightfully so. This is over 2 million something views in a matter of two weeks, I think. Even the videos that I reacted to, even the video that I did, I did a reaction video to it, that one is also getting a lot of views um, because this young man is just smart and tell it not only is smart, he's wise in the way that he brings about his message. You can debunk any of it. Anyway, um, here is the thing. I never knew there was anti Asian racism within the black community. That is something that we need to talk about. And I think it's about time. First of all, I will say I had an idea that it was happening. I neglected the thought because I was raised in Brooklyn. So I've seen a little bit of stuff, but not enough to say that's a major concern, at least based on what I was, what I was experiencing. He's going to open my mind and I'm sure of it. So. I'm ready once again for Charlie. You go ahead, my man. You take the take the helmet in your hands. Hi guys. I'm here to talk about the rampant anti-Asian racism I'm seeing from the black community. I started this YouTube channel a year ago to bring light to this specific issue. If you're here because of my last video, I have one thing to ask of you. Please like and watch the video in its entirety that will broaden the video's reach. At the end of this video, I make a public demand. So I already know what some of you are going to say. This is causing racial division. We need solidarity. Not all black people are doing this. Why are you generalizing? White people are racist against Asians too. Why aren't you talking about that? Mm. What about the anti-blackness in the Asian community? It's the media that's making it seem like black people are harming Asians more. Yeah, this video is meant for you to hopefully serve as a cold dose of reality. If you count yourself to be an open-minded person, I ask you to listen to what I have to say before jumping on to the comment section. The precise reason why I want to talk about this is because we live in a society where we Asian people can feel free to talk day and night about how white people are racist against us, but are immediately silenced when we try to talk about the anti-Asianness in the black community. Mm -hmm. Good point. Good point. All right, let's listen. And I, while I was walking down the street from my, from my high school to Walgreens, I was walking with three of my uh, friends from both China and Taiwan crossing the crosswalk there is a car just rush like rush through us driven by an african american shouting that go, go back to your home like go back from where you are from wow wow listen to that listen to that it's just shocked and scared of our safety and this white lady uh, kindly asked can i uh, can i call the police can i do anything for you we were like, it's okay. Thank you very much for your care. The point I'm making here is that we should not distinguish people by their race or or gender or anything. Uh, you see, you don't hear that on the news. <laughs> Rarely. Rarely. Black people can be racist. Ah, there we go. There we go. She done said it. Now, <laughs> the world ended. The world ended. Listen to what she said. Race or, or gender or anything. Black people can be racist. There are some people who don't believe this. And y'all need to change your perspective, especially among blacks. Y'all think because of the color of our skin, because there's been a history uh, primarily impacted us as black folks, we think we can be racist. Racism doesn't have any color, my friends. So she's on point. Look how the attitude of these people, we can already tell they're going to be upset with her by their race or or gender or anything. Black people can be racist. Why? Sorry. Oh, no. I, 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 I,
Wait, 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 wait. Well, you see, you see what they're doing. You see what they're doing. Oh, yeah, she, 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 she. she yeah, it's okay to speak your mind, but as soon as you make that statement, the black folks come out of the woodwork. Oh no, you can't say that. We can't be racist because we are black. <laughs> Stop it. Leave her, leave her alone. Let's start by saying I have very much a problem when a person of any race, white, black, Latino, or otherwise, commit hate crimes against Asian people. Mm -hmm. It makes my blood boil. And let's also start off by saying that when a black person harms an Asian person, that doesn't mean that all black people are suddenly responsible for that. Just as in the same vein, when a white person harms an Asian person, that doesn't mean that all white people are responsible for it. I think I need to say this because our world is going crazy. You are only personally responsible for things that are within your control. That's right. You're only responsible for your own acts, nothing else. But then we can't just say black people harming Asians are the actions of the few and then end the conversation there mm -hmm. because of the sheer magnitude of the problem. The near daily attacks, black people cussing Asian people out, punching and spitting and kicking Asian people and killing Asian people. There are dozens to hundreds of these cases every month, especially in the city of San Francisco. That's crazy. That's some serious facts. I, I never even knew that. I never even knew that. I didn't know you was that bad. This is happening every day. And if you're saying hundreds, you're exaggerating. This is why I need to make this video. People are not realizing the magnitude of what's going on because the national news media is not broadcasting this fact as incessantly as one might expect if there were hundreds of videos each month of black people getting punched, spat on, and kicked. Only the rare, exceptionally grotesque cases makes it onto the national news. At the height of the pandemic, they shined a quick and passing light on a number of these videos only because within that concentrated period of time, it became too obvious that- Yeah, I did hear that because the issue was one second. I had to sneeze. The issue was because, you know, people were saying that, you know, the China, China virus in reference to C-19, as a result of that, it, it created a level of animosity toward the Chinese people. And that did make the news. Um, but slightly, <laughs> really slightly, just a few clips. <laughs> If you didn't catch it, sorry, we got to move on. It's true. Life on a number of these videos only because within that concentrated period of time, it became too obvious that this was happening and they could not afford to ignore it without losing the public's trust. But this is happening to this day and your average anti-Asian hate crime makes it all the way up to local news. And the scattered and dispersed nature of reporting on what is happening means this problem is not rising to the public's consciousness. If you want to see the true scale of what's been going on, I recommend you watch my very first YouTube video I made a year ago. I listed out the black on Asian hate crimes that happened within the span of a month. It's one after another happening day after day. And bear in mind, this, these are only cases that A, is reported to the police, and B, that the news media picked up on. It's a small subset of a subset. In reality, there is a bigger undercurrent of this rampant anti-Asianness that we're talking about. Just within my own circle, I know multiple cases of this happening. They didn't report it to the police and it wasn't picked up by the news. How many more cases like this are out there? And at what point after hundreds of these videos do these cases no longer constitute isolated incidents? So then here's the most important conversation. If this is happening, what do we do about it? As I've said, this doesn't mean that all black people are doing this or that all black people are anti-Asian. But no matter how many times I say that, I found people still go like, oh, why are you generalizing? It's such a disingenuous attempt to deflect from having a conversation about this. And the conversation should go like this. We can all agree that when a black person commits an anti-Asian act or an Asian person commits an anti-black act, that doesn't mean that the entire communities are responsible for their actions. But to the extent that we're- That's why I say this kid is balanced, man. This young man is balanced. You, you see, you, you gotta be balanced. He is in his thinking, and that's what I love about him. That doesn't mean that the entire communities are responsible for their actions. But to the extent that we're having group level conversations, for example, about the anti-blackness within the Asian community, so too do we need to have group level conversations about the anti-Asianness in the black community. And the reason why this continues to happen is because we're not doing that. If you're saying, oh yeah, we already do. Uh, no, we don't. Conversations in private circles do not count. I'm talking about public discussions. I've kept up with these conversations. I've seen our Asian community so-called leaders have conversations with black community leaders on TV about race relations and talk over and over again about the anti-blackness within the Asian community and not a single sentence on the anti-Asianness in the black community. Amazingly, I've seen mainstream news channels do special segments about stop Asian hate and mention within these segments the anti-blackness within the Asian community without saying one word 
about the anti asianness in the black community are the segment that's supposed to be about our issues. Our Asian leaders having conversations, doing public speeches, and on social media call out the anti-blackness within our own, which is the right thing to do, but they stay silent as hundreds of videos emerge of black people brutalizing Asians. I've been to- Yeah, it makes you wonder why they're not actually highlighting it. Is it because of the Black Lives Lab Matter movement, you just can't speak against black people kind of thing? Is it one of those reasons? I don't know. But um, but again, he, he is spitting it, man. So a change must come. So more Asian people need to speak about the level of violence toward uh, Asian folks by black people. Simple as that. It, it, it needs to be brought to, it needs to be talked about. It, it has to be brought to the forefront be, be, before a change can happen. You know, the thing is, if people are not aware of it, it's going to continue. It's going to continue, friends. But they stay silent as hundreds of videos emerge of black people brutalizing Asians. I've been to stop Asian hate rallies and have seen again our so-called leaders denounce on stage the anti-blackness within our community and talk about how white supremacy is dividing us all and not, not a single word on the anti asianness within the black community. And in those same rallies, I've seen black activists, which thank you from the bottom of my heart for showing up, but I've seen them come up on stage and talk about anti-Asian hate without mentioning how there's a real anti asianist problem in the black community. In fact, I have not heard a single black activist, community leader, politician, media personality with a platform publicly mention a sentence about the rampant anti asianness within the black community, much less have a long and sustained conversation about it. With the only exception of Sean King, I've seen Asian people be demonized for talking about anti asianness in the black community on social media and in real life, while when black people talk about their anti blackness within the Asian community, everyone nods along as a matter of course. If you're wondering why all of that is going on, because it wouldn't seem to make sense, right? Why this disparate treatment? The mainstream narrative is that even if it's not a white person harming Asians, it's still white supremacy because white supremacy pits communities of color against one another. And so even if black people harm Asians, white supremacy is to blame. And then we're told- Wow, that's, a, that's a, such a weird concept. So how is it you blame white supremacy for the violent acts of black people toward Asians? It's almost like the, the as blacks, okay, we we've we've become so protected uh, to a point where it's almost like you can't speak against them, just like you know the rest of these the alphabet community. They're just so protected. If you dare to say something against them, it's considered bigotry and racism or discrimination, whatever it is, and that's an issue because I, I don't want to be treated any more special than anybody else out there. I don't deserve a special treatment i don't deserve i didn't deserve an award I, I i know affirmative action i no just treat me like everybody else because i'm no special and i think that's the way we gotta look at things you know but uh it is it is crazy though that they will blame white supremacists for the violent acts of how does white supremacists influence black people to do what they do but the second question i ask then there is a passive attitude about this thing because when black people are hurting black people, when there's black on black crimes, who do you blame for that? <laughs> who do you blame? You know, so uh, it doesn't get highlighted. We just say, well, that's black people doing things to black people. And uh, yeah, it's like, wait a minute. We need to change. I'm, I'm not here trying to come after black people. All I'm saying is that any behavior that that is evil at heart i condemn because god condemns it um whether it is being done by whoever i have no respect for that um because i'm a christian <laughs> i don't place a uh, skin color above character i don't place i don't place group thinking above biblical realities i don't do that because what i look at i look at god truth and humanity. That, that's just the way I moved. I don't sit here and pick and choose just to appease a particular class. I don't believe I don't do that myself. That's not what it means to be a man of God. And that's why this stuff needs to be brought to light. So black people who are doing this to Asian people, we just need to stop. And so even if black people harm Asians, white supremacy is to blame. And then we're told we can't have a conversation about anti asianness in the black community because it's divisive and we need solidarity and unite against white supremacy. Well, 
Well then, doesn't that same logic flow to the anti-blackness in the Asian community? If supposedly, white supremacy is at fault when Asian people harm black people because it pits communities of color against one another, isn't talking about anti-blackness in the Asian community also problematic for that same reason? Because it's divisive and we need solidarity, unite against white supremacy all- Exactly. You will think so, right? But no, you can't say that because it doesn't fit the narrative. All that? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. But I'll give you another explanation that I think more accurately describes what's going on here. What's actually going on here is that the black community has greater political power than the Asian community within the political. All right, he said it. I just clapped. I'm gonna move on. Aisle ...that purports to represent all of us, the progressive left. With this disparity in political power and influence, we're seeing a situation where anti-blackness in the Asian community is being publicly discussed, but not the anti-Asianness in the black community. And, and this, you know, is the reason why I feel the need to speak up against the wokeism. And we also got to talk about, before he addresses the wokeism, what are the stats of anti-blackness violence in an Asian community in comparison to anti-Asian violence in a black community. I would like to know what these stats are. I don't necessarily know, but I don't know how many black people live in Asian communities. Now, I know there are some places in New York and Brooklyn where that is the case, Chinatown and so on. Yeah, but even that, oh, and there, I, I wanted to also consider, what are the reasons why an Asian person will attack a black person? Will they do this just because the person is black? Or will they do this just because the person is doing something in the community or that they're not supposed to be doing? That's my question. And I'm asking the same question for Asian people. Are we are black people attacking Asian people just because they're Asian? Or are black people attacking Asian people because they, there are Asian people in their community that are doing things they're not supposed to be doing, right? So those are things we need to consider and be bring to the conversation. But it seems to me, and I could be wrong, there is this anti-Asian spirit in the black community. And I was raised in Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> okay, so I'm telling you, it doesn't take any reason. There's been cases where kids from school will just walk onto an Asian kid and just punch him in the face just because they can. There was no reason for it. They didn't do anything to me. They didn't take my girl. They didn't smoke my drug. Nothing. Just because they could. I've seen that. that that's just crazy to me. And I'm, I'm wondering, is this is what's going on here? The black, black community. And, and this, you know, is the reason why I feel the need to speak up against the wokeism ideology that has taken over the progressive left, because that is the, the thing that is underlying all of this. Because according to the ideology, there are two categories of people, the oppressor and the oppressed. With all the dimensions with which you could form discrete categories of people, race, gender, sexuality, so on and so forth. And within the category of the oppressed, there's rankings of the groups by how oppressed they are. And according to the dictates of this belief system, you can say whatever you want about the oppressor group, but you cannot say anything critical about groups that are higher up in the ladder of oppression. While you can say- I'm telling you, this kid is smart. He is good. The thing is, hi guys. Uh, be, uh oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So, I want him to continue where he left off here, but it's such a good point he just made here. So we are protecting certain groups of people as a result of how oppressed they were, based on their historical account. <laughs> so that's what's going on here. That's some crazy nonsense. Crazy nonsense. He has greater political power than the Asian community within the political aisle that purports to represent all of us, the progressive left. With this disparity in political power and influence, we're seeing a situation where anti-blackness in the Asian community is being publicly discussed, but not the anti-Asianness in the black community. And, and this, you know, is the reason why I feel the need to speak up against the wokeism ideology that has taken over the progressive left, because that is the, the thing that is underlying all of this. Because according to the ideology, there are two categories of people, the oppressor and the oppressed. With all the dimensions with which you could form discrete categories of people, race, gender, sexuality, so on and so forth. And within the category of the oppressed, there's rankings of the groups by how oppressed they are. And according to the dictates of this belief system, you can say whatever you want about the oppressor group, but you cannot say anything critical about groups that are higher up in the ladder of oppression, while you can say critical things about the groups lower in the ladder. 
And so what this ideology does is it accords groups highest up in the oppression ladder the power to dominate social and political discussions as it pertains to these group categories. That is the whole thing behind what so many people believe nowadays, that you cannot be racist to white people because they're in the oppressor group, and that black people cannot be racist because they don't have the power to be racist because they're that's dead wrong. You gotta also, guys, check out the other videos that he put out. What are we doing to white people? If you've never seen that, uh, go check it out because he went hard, man. And I did a reaction to that, like I've said in the beginning of this video. He went hard. And it's crazy, this idea of the oppressed and the oppressor. Um, yeah, I mean, I totally disagree with that concept. It's just that if it's wrong, it's wrong. It's wrong on every level. It's wrong to whoever you do it to. It's wrong whoever you do it against. I don't care if you're pressing. If you're doing the oppressing, I don't care what skin color you are, where you're from, what your historical account is. It's just wrong, okay? <laughs> it's just wrong. You cannot justify the, the, the crime. You cannot condemn the crime of the white man uh, when it is done against black. And you justify the crime of the black man when it is done against white. That's just to me, it's pure nonsense. It's hypocrisy. It's a double standard. And I don't respect that. They're the highest up in the ladder of the oppressed category. And all the things that I've said earlier about how anti-blackness in the Asian community is discussed in the public sphere, but not the anti-Asianness in the black community, that is a manifestation of this belief system. Some people are under the belief that we can't talk about anti-Asianness in the black community because they're the most oppressed and will silence you by saying that talking about it is divisive. But they don't say it's divisive to talk about the anti-blackness within our community. And in, in effect, this gives the black community the power to escape accountability because they have a support system of people of all races who believe that to hold the black community accountable is to perpetuate the oppression of the group highest up on the oppression ladder. And they will attack and vilify anyone who dares to speak about it. As it stands, we Asian people are free to talk about the racism we experience from white people all day long, no social repercussions. But we cannot talk about the racism we experience from black people without being canceled. Black people can be racist! White people, sorry. Oh no. Yeah. Society tells us that we cannot talk about it. Then what that means is that you don't care about the racism we endure unless it fits your worldview and your agenda. So you don't care about anti-Asian racism. Listen to that again. Listen to that again. You just want to use us as a political pawn. And the same people that adhere to these views, many of them our own people, as a political pawn. There we go. And your agenda. So you don't care about anti Asian racism, you just want to use us as a political pawn. And the same people that adhere to these. <sighs> I'm telling you. I love this kid. I love this young man. Stop calling him a kid. He's a young man. Intelligent. These views, many of them our own people attempt to put blindfolds over themselves and others in order to explain facts that contradict their belief system. They see hundreds upon hundreds of these videos that have emerged last year, and they say it's the anti-black media that is making it seem like black people are brutalizing Asians when it's white people doing it more. I'm sorry, but oh my god, I'm exhausted with this conspiracy theory BS. Really? The media? The same- Conspiracy theory BS. <laughs> god, I'm exhausted with this conspiracy theory BS. Really? The media? The same mainstream media that espoused progressive views all day long with the one exception of Fox News? The MSNBC show that has repeatedly had on people that talk about white people having a violent character? Or is it CNN who will run breaking news segments when a sensational story about a white person inflicting violence on a person of color comes along but tweets that a car, yeah, a car killed six people when a black man who professes hate for white people on social media rammed through six white people during a Christmas parade? Yeah, I think that was, uh, what was his name? Daryl Brooks, I think his name was. Yep. Yep. And he took he took the stand. Um, he took the stand to supposedly, I think that's the case of Daryl Brooks. Um, but he took the stand to supposedly defend himself. That didn't go too well. Who professes hate for white people on social media, rammed through six white people during a Christmas parade. Is it the mainstream media that is making it artificially seem like black people are disproportionately harming Asians? Or is it the case that people are pointing to the less than usual instances where the media is actually showing what's happening on the ground and then saying it's anti-black to show it? The kind of reaction and public backlash, which is the very reason why the media tends not to do this in the first place. And let me ask you a few more questions. If it was actually the case that hundreds of these videos are not representative of reality, that white people are doing it more, and that there are thousands of videos of white people brutalizing Asians that the anti-black media is, is sur surreptitiously hiding from the public, wouldn't we have noticed by now? 
if there were actually thousands of videos of white people brutalizing Asian people, isn't it far more likely that the media would be broadcasting it day after day, talking about this emergency, how white supremacy is endangering Asian Americans? Since yep, yep, mm, such a good point. Since that has been their talking point all throughout. And if there were to be, hypothetically, hundreds of videos of Asian people beating, spitting, and kicking black people, Will we not be hearing relentlessly in our public discourse how the Asian community needs to address the anti-blackness within? Wouldn't the black community rightfully be demanding that of us? Mm -hmm. So why aren't we? We need to start standing up for ourselves. Look, I don't need to say much more. If you're interested, you can watch the, the full two-hour video I uploaded a year earlier. Just want to reiterate yet again, if you're a black person who is out there living their life and have done nothing to harm Asian folks, you are not responsible for any of this. Nobody is entitled to demand anything of you just because other black people are committing anti-Asian acts. And mm. I just want to send a clear message to Asian folks that just because this is happening to us doesn't then give us license to respond back with hate to mm. those black people who are not- Ah, I hope you got that one. <laughs> You cannot kill fire with fire. You cannot address racism with racism. All right. And that was a key. That was a key, key point. And I know some will respond with violence. And I'm just saying it just won't go far. It's just not going to solve anything. Somebody has to resist and push back. Um, that's just the way it has to be, man. That's God's way of doing things. But boy, we need to change as a culture. We need to change as a people this is happening to us doesn't then give us license to respond back with hate to mm. those black people who are not doing this to us. Having said all this, the calculus is different for black communities, political and thought leaders and organizations who are engaging in public race relations discourse in an inequitable manner. So I would like to make the public demand the same demand I made a year ago in my original video. I demand that leaders of the black community whose only comments about the rampant anti-Asian violence amounted to it's because of white supremacy to publicly state that anti-Asianness within the black community is a serious problem. And yep. I demand. Yep. 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 That's a good call. I want to see who's going to respond to the call. To publicly state that anti-Asianness within the black community is a serious problem. And I demand that they lay out a plan, steps to take, to curtail the black on Asian racial violence that has pervaded our society without anyone saying anything. If we as a society are having ongoing public conversations about anti-blackness within our community, so too should we expect ongoing public conversations about the anti-Asianness within the black community. Thank you for watching. Wish me luck. Wow. My man. Way to go. Way to go. Way to go, Charlie. I, I, I hear your message. It makes sense. I agree. And I think a change must come. I have no excuse whatsoever. I never even thought of hurting a Haitian person. It's not in my heart. It's not even in my thought. So um, the fact is happening. It's a real issue. Thank you for bringing our attention, bringing attention to it. And also, I, I really hope and, and pray that Asian people will speak up. We want to see more. You just one man. I want to see who else is speaking about this. Bring it to light. And I'm hoping this reaction video will give rise to a movement to bring about positive change, both in black and in the black and also in Asian communities. And I think we can do better as a people, man. Some of the stuff that we do to one another has a lot to do with the way the media and spins the news the way we are told that we are to hate a particular group and protect a particular group of people. And by us doing that, by them doing that to us, now we don't, we no longer know what it means to treat each other with love and respect. There's no excuse for it. A change must come. And I will say this, like my Bible says, reading it, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. That's it. So we can't fight violence with violence. We need to do good, man. The Bible says, if your enemy is hungry, feed them. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink, man. So there is to be a change in the way we treat people. Recompense no evil for evil, providing things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lie in you, live peaceably with all men. You see, friends, we need to learn what it means to love and care for one another. There is a change that must take place among us as a people, as a culture, as a country. It's not impossible, but we must be willing. The conversation must take place. 
uh, an appeal must be made. People must be willing to change their perspective. Look how well we've done over the years. <laughs> While we have done a lot of bad things, but I think there's been a lot of positive things as well. I think even though racism is still an issue today, but we've we've came from a long way. We've we've come from a long way. We've achieved a lot. Uh, things are not the same way they used to be. Okay, segregation and Jim Crow and lynching and so on. We don't worry about these things today, although there is still something in the back of our mind that there's still some crazy stuff happening. But I think a lot of it is being pushed on us by the media and it's not really happening as we think it is. Uh, you know, so when we look at our history as a people, I think um, I'm talking about as a people, not just black people here. I'm talking about all men. We can look at many things that we've learned and done better, uh, things we could have done better. Um and I think if we look at our past, we can actually learn how to deal with things that are happening currently and finding ways to deal with them in a positive and effective way. Um, and then what's happening in the black community today and the Asian community, it's not anything that we can't fix. It's not anything that God can fix, but we must be willing. If there is a will, there is a way we can uh, certainly bring about positive change. And I'm hoping this message from Charlie Cheon is going to hit the spot and bring about a change necessary in the culture. Until next time, and as always, remember to look up to Jesus to live by faith. Have a good one. Bye. Hello, friends. Did you enjoy today's video? I hope that it was clear and I hope it was a blessing to you. And if you have, make sure you like and subscribe to the page. Click the bell icon for more of my notification uploads, okay? There are links below where you can get in touch with us, links where you can support the channel, links to our merch, and also if you wanna join the community page, join the Look and Live YouTube family. And if you have to, if you have any question, any prayer requests as well, we welcome all of that in the discussion. Join also our Discord page, and there are a number of things there as well uh, where we can we, we communicate with you on a, on a daily basis about what's happening in the channel. By the way, if you happen to be interested in the study of the word, we have a YouTube channel dedicated for that, the Look and Live Bible Studies YouTube channel. You can go and subscribe to that as well. And as always, remember to look unto Jesus and to live by faith. Have a good one. Bye.